Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Nice day isn't it? Put a bit of uh, you know, I'll put bubble gum up today is it? Bubble gum. We're all bubble gummed up. Shout out Bullseye. Rotherham. Dalton Rotherham looking after Big Porky. Can't be having a car that smells, can we? Porky. Fury 29 fight. What was Lennox 29 fight? And Ali or Mike Tyson? Are there any great heavy? Tim in Bradford. Tim, I don't think it really matters, to be honest, uh, what fight it's in because Joshua won world title in his 16th fight, didn't it? But, so I'm not going to put comparisons with Tyson Fury and uh, Lennox because there's, they were probably fighting better people after that fight, so I don't think we need to go down that path. But what I will say is, you can't shout that you're this top number one guy and even if Ring Magazine have got you as number one, what are you doing at Ring with 7th best German? So, I mean it's not even best German is it? So that's how I look at it. So all the stick that Tyson's getting for fighting Tom Swartz, he deserves. But is he going to be bothered when he banks his check? No he ain't, is he? He's not going to be bothered. So. So it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. Why was Hearn going on about the shows? People go on about when he has put on six or seven shows in UK this year. But which UK show was decent, Porky? Robert in Devon. You know, that's a tough question, that. I don't know, really, because... They haven't put that many good shows on this year, but the pad, they've been passable, haven't they? I think what's happened with Eddie Hearn is he's overachieved, hasn't he? He's maybe spoiled us, hasn't he, over the last few years, from from when Frotch were, for, were fighting. I'm not, I always dig that one out, don't I, but the guy fought wars, didn't he? So when Carl was fighting, you know, it, all them hard fights he had with Glenn Johnson, Andre Ward, Boutte, Yusuf Mack, I will not say we're in a hard fight, he chopped him down like cheese, but... And the two Groves fights, so he, you know, he spilt his guts with Eddie, didn't he? But, since then, Eddie's abused it, hasn't he? And since this American thing came on board, he's not been bothered, has he? Not been bothered at all. So... So it is what it is, isn't it? We just pull up here, so I end up crashing. Porky, would you say that Eddie Ernie's in 2019 has been a success in the UK, or has greed took over him? And he's tried for world domination and lost his way. Yeah, a bit like Goldfinger. Claire in Middlesbrough. Yeah, I would say that. I would say that he's got greedy, but he's a businessman, isn't he? So, there ain't a promoter in England that wouldn't have done what he's done. And that's just how it goes, isn't it, I'm afraid. That's just how, it, how, it, how it's gone, isn't it, for him, isn't it? But yeah, I do think that... It's better, isn't it? I do think that Eddie... Uh, has took a few liberties, especially, especially in the last 12 months, I mean, God, they're putting better shows on in Italy, so, yeah, I do think that. 
Porky, you said Frank versus Edwards is a good fight, but now you say it's better next year. Which is it, Mark in Sheffield? <laughs> yeah, I did say that, yeah. Well, I mean, I wanted it now, didn't I? And for some reason, Den thinks it's better next year. So, I don't make, mis I don't make the decisions. Glyn thinks it's a better fight next year when it's been built up, so... Maybe Tommy might need a couple more fights. Who knows, but... If the fight can be built up as a BT headliner, isn't that good? That's good, isn't it, that, if they can do that? I think so. What's he doing him here? What are you doing here, mate? Lane, you prick! Fucking prick! You nearly fucking cut into me. See, that's what happens when you whip outside of going onto motorway slip road. You whip outside them trucks. They don't see you coming darting, do they? On or outside of them, so they just naturally think, "Oh, we'll just go bump into the fast lane." What a prick you are, Mr. Fucking Sunblast Bread. There go, sunblast sponsorship. I don't eat bread anyway. Uh, where were I then? Before I got rudely interrupted by that bad driver. Right, have that one done. Getting through some work today, aren't we? Did you agree with Martin Theobald hammering the free sports model on New Age Podfather? The other night, Porky. Paul in Pontefract. Well, I, I did hear it. I was a bit disappointed with Martin Theobald, but we're talking about a man here that talks about men's dicks and about who's got a big dick and things like that, so Martin Theobald is a dick. Tell him I fucking said that as well. So he keeps going on about Steve Goodwin. Steve Goodwin's a numbers man, isn't he? He's a nice bloke, can I get on with Steve? But well, Steve's a numbers man, isn't he? Steve's got no television. I don't see Steve Goodwin paying out to get his lads on free sports. I don't see Mo Farah paying out to get on free sports and uh, no Martin Theobald you do not know the criteria of free sports and and how the model works so why are you chatting shit on your podcast saying you know the ins and outs of the deal when you don't know the ins and outs of the deal so my advice to you is this go and look at what Steve Goodwin's just put on what Den's just put on Go and look at how many world champions, European champions and British champions and Commonwealth champions Dennis Hobson's got and look what he's done putting big fights on in Vegas and then go look at what Steve Goodwin's done. Yeah, he didn't sell out other night but did your call sell out and your calls half the size at Pan's phone. So get your facts right Martin before you start throwing accusations about. Alright. Yeah, and I flicked over onto Free Sports. I had a look and then I flicked back. Oh, Mr. Fucking Hardcore Martin Theobald. Oh my God. When you're not talking about men's dicks, you're comparing t people who've got TV shows to Steve Goodwin's Your Call Show. Get a fucking grip. Get a fucking grip, Martin. Bit disappointing from you, Martin, there, but. Then again, you do fucking go looking at men's dicks in fucking toilets. So, why do you always say, why do you always big up Carl Frotch's CV and Frankie Gavin's skill set, Marcus, in Leeds? Uh, Carl Frotch's CV? Fucking hell. He beat more world champions than Ray Leonard and Marvin Agler. He's beat more world champions as a super middleweight. 
throughout history, in the 35 years that the super middleweight history has been going, he is the top dog at super middleweight. Been more world champion. Yeah, Joe Calzaghe had more world title fights, but if he's had 10 more title fights, how come he hasn't beat as many top guys as Frotch at super middle? Statistics, kid. Statistics. Frotch is number one, Kessler's number two, Svenok is number three, Kalzag is number four. As regards, will champions be? That's how Adil it starts. So fuck off. I know you're having a dig, you little prick. The other one, Frankie Gavin's skill set. Yeah. Talking about a kid here who won world amateur gold. Our only world amateur gold. First world amateur medal, Frotch as a bronze. First amateur gold. Frankie Gavin. There you go. Alright. Mm, you can get some of them. So. Who has come out of the GB setup pocket? Who has set the world on fire? Joe in Liverpool. Uh, well, you'd have to say Callum Smith won World Boxing Super Series. Although, I'd say it was a very weak tournament, and who's Callum Smith's best win? Shot Joe, a shot and injured Joe, George Bowes. Uh, Charlie Edwards, has he set the world on fire? No. Has Joshua, carefully matched, just been beat. Uh, Yafai, I think he's done well, he's undefeated, he's, what is he, a three year world champion? Two, three year world champion, so, but Yafai's not really had a barnstorm a fight, has he yet? So they're all carefully selected guys, aren't they, from Eddie Early? Trying to protect them, innit? Because they're Eddie's babies, aren't they, from GB team, but on a better note, how many people has Eddie Earn took to a world title from debut who've not been in the GB team? Zero. His dad took one, Eddie's took zero. So, it is what it is, isn't it? Do you feel, Porky, that we were sold a load of old bollocks with the Joshua hype train mark in London? Fuck off! Yeah, I do, yeah. We're ripping shit up today, aren't we? <laughs> we're on a charge! Porky's on a charge! Can <laughs> we give it some up here or we're gonna run out of road? Here we are. Ah, uh, we're gonna run out of road. Can't be getting any speeding tickets up here, can we? What do you reckon, Mr. Plod? A hundred things going on at once here, multitasking. Uh, could have done with my sunglasses. There's always something I forget. You know, I might buy some ray bags today. Has Callum Smith less Tesco Joe? Peter in Bolton. Uh, well, Martin Theobald with his sources, a new age pod father, said, oh, he's left Tesco Joe. So if Martin Theobald says it, it must be true. Hey? So, I ain't heard anything. So, Callum Smith's undefeated, so why would he want to leave Joe? But if Martin Theobald says it on the New Age pod, with the resources and the sources he's got, like Steve, no TV deal, Goodwin. <laughs> I like Steve Goodwin, but he's a numbers man, isn't he? He's a millionaire, but I don't see him stumping up for TV for his fighters. Why is that? Get your fighters out there, Steve. Get them on TV. Martin Theobald's your advisor. I mean, we advisors like that, fucking hell. Your call men, them, aren't they? Now that is a small hall. Pons Ford is an arena. That's not a small hall, that's an arena. So, just had to correct you there, Martin Theobald. So get back under your Transformers quill. Do you think Gorman Debar show is a good show, Porky? Jim in Lee. Yeah, I think it's a great, I think it's a great show. Yeah, I think it's a great show, honestly. Really, really good show. 
Corky, what's Peter McDonough, a good boxer? Seamus in Belfast. Great boxer, beat Curtis Woodhouse. Who won a British title. Two-time Irish champion, yeah. Yeah, I'd say Peter McDonough, a good boxer. Two-time Irish champion. So, he's Peter Fury, a tough taskmaster in his gym. And he's... Is he serious about his boxing training, Gareth in Cardiff? Is Peter Fury a tough taskmaster? Oh well, yeah, I suppose, yeah. When I was ever in that gym, I, you always feel like you, you don't know what's going to happen next. So yeah, it's pretty serious. Yeah, I'd say, I'd, I'd say Peter's pretty serious about training, yeah. That's all I'm going to say on that. Where is Callum Smith's career going with his career at the moment, Porky? Another Callum Smith question. John in Tamworth. I don't know, to be honest. I'd like to see him fight Billy Joe, but... I don't know. Callum Smith just beat a, a, an old welterweight, hasn't he? An old, sorry, an old, an old middleweight that they dug up. What the fuck was that? So, John in Tamworth, I don't know what's going on with Callum Smith. He needs to get a move on though, doesn't he? So, Porky, do you have any intent on... Do you have any interest in any other sports? And if you could have done a sport yourself, which would it have been? Philip in uh, I would have liked to have been a professional pool player. Uh, it's something that I think that, you know, I had a table at home, a proper one, and for have stuck at that maybe. I would like to have played in cricket as well professionally. But you know, you go down another route, don't you, when you're 16. So, mine were Borstal. Or they change it to dissension centre, and I suppose once once you do something like that, it's over before you get before it gets started, isn't it? Really. So, but I still like watching cricket, and I still like a game of pool, snooker. Not as good as snooker as our pool, but I like a game. It relaxes me and gives me time to think. I've just bought a new queue. I just bought a new queue yesterday. So. I gave my queue away, pissed up Friday night, didn't I? Ended up with a, a drink for it. What a drink on bar. Yeah, there's a drink on bar for you, Porky. That's the red. And then on, on uh, I went to get uh, my queue out of my boot yesterday. <laughs> there's no queue. Go on then, mate. Cheers, mate. Uh, so then I have no cure for where's my cue then I realised. I get away pissed up. I get it my dad and he didn't want it, so I get it his mate Brian. He bought me a glass of red. So up to clanger then I but I needed a a change I think. I wanted a change, so I've got a new cue now. But it isn't the one I've I wanted. This is the two D I wanted one of them David Bowen cues at Wadders, but they're like four or five hundred quid. And they take 10 months, you've got to wait 10 months. It's a nightmare. So, I just bought a, an average one, just to tide me over. But, uh, Dennis is now, but he's not here. It's his birthday today, Dennis, 57. Ooh. Not here. Fifty-seven year old. We're trying to trendy Dennis up with the cost top for birthday. Let me just read these other questions. Right. Porky, what's Glen Rhodes like? I saw him in Meadow Hall once with a fit blonde bird last year, Jeffrey and Rotherham. <laughs> it wouldn't have been Glen Rhodes, missus. He ain't got one. Now I'm only joking, Glen. Glen's all right. Glyn Rose is a good bloke. Uh, 
What are your thoughts on step aside money porky, Wayne in Doncaster? If you can get it, get it. If you can get a step aside money, get it because it's money for now, isn't it? So yeah, if you can get it, go and get it. That's my opinion on step aside money. Uh, will Gav McDonald versus Josh Whale happen, Porky? Tom in Barnsley. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that at the moment. I'm not going to comment on that. I'm going to comment on that at a later date once we've had a team meeting. Is Eddie finished? Nearly in all dilly heads. No, he ain't finished. Will Tyrone Nurse get a title shot? Mark in Usfield. Probably Tyrone's make that. Uh, yeah, he will get a title shot. Is Dennis Hobson back? Selena in Doncaster. Taking piss now, aren't you? Well, Kevin Sanders seems to think he is. And so do a few other people that I've spoke to. So, it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is, but uh, that's boxing, isn't it? It's an hard sport. I've got about 100 things going on at once here, I'm going to turn that on. Right, turn that on. You can't have music on, can you, when you're filming? Right. Right. See where he is. He's away in head like a berry, won't he? I've got the Bluetooth. Let me in your bike. Right. Alright. So, other than that, quick 20 questions for you there. That's just a 23, but I'm going to do 20 in this video. And we'll uh, wait for some more questions to come in. I like to do it when there's about 50 or 70. I usually get loads of questions on a Monday morning. More than any other morning. Monday morning. But don't forget to put where you're from. Because it gives you, you know, if they say, oh, it's a question here from Frank. Frank, oh, it could be anybody, couldn't it? But if it's Frank and it's from Sheffield, then you know you've sent it. You know it's your question, don't you? So, anyway, you think I'm going to turn this off now? Have a look. I'm waiting for a game of snooker today. Oh, I'll show you my cue. See what you think of my cue. It's always something nice about a new queue in it, it's like getting new golf clubs in it. Woo! Woo! Look at that. Queue's a queue in it, Stephen Hendry had a 10 quid queue years. And it went missing. Alright. It went missing, and um, this is a Ronnie O'Sullivan one, this, but. It went missing and he paid a grand. Uh, for, for somebody to get it, to, fa to find his cue. He needed his cue. Uh, so they must be important to him. But I always personally think, all you people out there who want to play, as long as you've got a good tip on it, I don't think it really matters. And tips always have to be shaped and roughed up because you get more out at cue ball but, than when they're hard. But, cue's a cue in it, but it's nice to have your own cue in it. But the thing is, don't get pissed up. In fact, I'm going to put that back in boot because it knocks hell out of your car, don't they, these cases? They knock hell out of your cars, but... 
So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, it's a fantastic sport. And uh, we're going to have a meeting now about Josh Wales next fight. We've already had one the other day, but we're going to have another one now. And uh, see if we can uh, come up with something because he's in a good position now, isn't he, Josh Wales? Just ice somebody in the first round and. And there's a lot. There's people talking and they're about him fighting Gav McDonald, but Gav McDonald's just fought for a world title, and he is now fighting Jamie Spate, a journeyman who's got a losing record. So, what what's going on there? You don't go from a world title to that, do you? When Froch lost his world title against Andre Ward, what did he do? He fought Boutte next fight for another world title, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? Gav McDonald, what's he do? Loses his world title shot, fighting a journeyman fight. So, is that bad management? I don't know. Are they treading water and hoping that Eddie throws him a crumb? Maybe. Would he want to fight Josh Whale? I don't know. I think Josh Whale beats him, to be honest. I think Gavin's a spent force. But we're going to see, aren't we? We'll see what, what the logistics can come up. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Boom.